now that the hype for William Wallace has started to die down a little bit today I wanted to do something that I don't think I've ever done on the channel before and that is taking out my crystal ball and looking into the future for the next nine months of rise of kingdoms I'm going to use all the knowledge that I've learned over the past six years of playing this game to try to predict the release cycle and timing of the next archer commanders the next cavalry the next range leadership and even the next infantry cycle even though we literally just got one and the purpose of this video is to help you guys plan your account up to a year in advance because if you know what is likely to come down the pipeline you can start planning today that way you don't make any mistakes and invest in the wrong commanders moving forward but first what's going on guys cheers the low carb monster shortage is so bad I've resorted to bang it tastes good but I instantly get a headache so this can't be good for you anyway before we jump into the video drop a thumbs up on it if you appreciate guides that help you future proof your account so you can avoid mistakes like investing in Zhang Yu at the end of 2024 watch the next cavalry release has some insane synergy with Zhang Yu and he becomes meta again and then I eat my words and look like an idiot anyway let's jump right into the spreadsheet because nothing screams exciting gameplay like a massive spreadsheet okay and this wouldn't be an investment guide video if there wasn't a big spreadsheet involved am I right now I've shown the spreadsheet in the past when I've attempted to predict the future commanders come into the game I'm not going to be trying to predict like the damage factor or AOE status or anything like that in this video I just want to focus on when are the next cycles coming into the game and what should you be on the lookout for okay now I've also gone in and actually kind of tweaked some of the dates here so that way we have a bit more of a complete picture as to how frequently we see new commander releases okay and I've mentioned this in the past but it seems to be the case that on average we see new commander releases every 70 days now it might feel like a little bit sooner than that because typically like the information comes out a little bit before then right like they'll they'll talk about oh Belisarius Prime is coming and then you know a week or two later or three weeks later then they land in the game right and so it feels like the release cycle is very fast but in reality it's a little over two months between every single new commander release and for some people that might be too fast for some people it's not and it's also worth keeping in mind that like sometimes it's 84 days and sometimes it's 56 days okay so we're going to discuss that a little bit in the video but I basically made this spreadsheet and it sort of goes in chronological order from the release of all these commanders now of course these are only the legendary commanders because that's all we're talking about in this video but once you scroll past this like initial uh, release cycle of commanders you start to see a pattern form you see cavalry infantry archers cavalry infantry archers leadership cavalry infantry archers leadership cavalry and you get the deal so as we scroll through here that seems to be the trend for a while until we see the release of the engineering commanders and that kind of shook things up a little bit right because we saw five different commander cycles release between Suleiman and Honda and Heraclius Bobber and Margaret right and I think that part of that was because they were trying to fine tune the ranged gameplay in the game and because they were going to release three commanders all at the same time so typically it would be every fourth cycle would be leadership right it was Theodora YSS and then we had Chandragupta Zenobia Nebu and then we got Moctezuma still hilarious that he is a mightiest governor commander but anyway Heraclius Bobber and Margaret kind of broke that trend a little bit which makes it a little bit harder to predict when we're going to be getting the next ranged and leadership commanders but what I can tell you right now is that I bet the next commander release is going to be Archer commanders. Okay. Those are the ones that we haven't seen in a while. And by that, we haven't seen them since January of this year with Osher Bonapal and Herman Prime. So if we know that archers are coming down the line, then we also know a couple of other things. First of all, we're probably going to get an archer garrison here, right? Because one of the things that I pointed out before is that usually the mightiest governor commander you can see here marked as MGE. If you go back in history, you'll see that last time we got a rally commander and before that we got a garrison commander and before that we got a rally commander and before that we got a garrison commander and before that we got a rally commander and before that we got a garrison commander and this is going all the way back to the beginning of 2020 so for over four years the developers have kept this trend and so while that doesn't guarantee that we're going to be getting an upcoming archer garrison for the mge it's probably going to be an archer garrison for the mge right unless they break that four-year trend i mean that just seems to be what we should expect here now the other thing too is that the wheel of fortune commander historically again for the past like four years or so has been a versatility commander and typically versatility commanders are the ones that are really good for open field combat I mean if we look throughout the past we know Belisarius Prime is built for open field fighting same thing with William Wallace same thing with Liu Che same thing with Herman Prime right like all 
these commanders are built for open field even the engineering commanders are like those are for open field fighting now as for when we could expect these commanders I suspect that we would get them sometime in October okay now the soonest we could see these commanders would be like September 24th or something like that if I'm looking at my calendar correctly uh that would be like the soonest we would see the wheel of fortune pop for these new commanders but I think October 8th is more likely of course we could see October 22nd as like an 84 day release window if they were to push it a little bit longer but as I mentioned before it seems like 70 days is kind of the average length for which we get new commanders and we haven't seen a 56 day release window since we saw the introduction of the ranged commanders right and so you know if they're going to go long medium or short in terms of the release window I would say it would be more likely 56 or 70 days rather than 84 I mean they could do 84 again but it seems like they'll probably do 56 or 70 I'm betting on 70. so what does this mean for you well if you are currently looking to build an archer army then you know two things well first of all if you're a garrison or rally player well you know that we're probably going to get a garrison and the other thing that you should know is that we're definitely going to get or I shouldn't say definitely but we're most likely going to get an open field commander and so when we look at what the best open field commanders are in rise of kingdoms right now for archers we're looking at Herman Prime and we're looking at Zhuge Liang right those are the best and if we assume a reasonable level of power creep then maybe this new archer commander could replace one of those two commanders now the thing about that is that those two commanders are so unbelievably good that i feel like it would be hard pressed for them to make a new archer open field commander that is like a must-have commander right because the past two releases for archers feel like they're must-have commanders that's just how i feel i feel like herman prime kind of a must-have the poison stacks are just so good the aoe is so good and juge leung is one of the best commanders in the game right now so um is it you know possible that this new archer open field commander could bench one of those two yes of course anything is possible right and it could be the case that the garrison commander is good in the field as well although we typically don't see that uh, a lot of times garrison commanders are just good for the garrison whereas if you look at Asher Bonapal, for example he is quite good in the open field very very good five target aoe lots to love about Asher Bonapal in the open field so it's a little different for conquering commanders for rally commanders of course we have seen like gorgo for example she's a garrison commander she's fine in the open field so it's not like it never happens but more than likely one of these two commanders will be decent in the open field now the other thing we have to keep in mind here is that if we look at the past few releases of open field commanders which is William Wallace and Belisarius Prime you have to understand that both of those open field commanders we're not necessarily must have commanders right you don't really need William Wallace if you already have an expertise Alexander the Great or even a CPO Prime if you're only running a single infantry army you can continue to run CPO Prime with Liu Che and you're still going to have probably the best infantry march in the entire game right now so you didn't need William Wallace and you didn't need Belisarius Prime either right if you're running Nevsky Joan or if you're running Huo Joan or you're running you know Nevsky William, whatever those are all great marches and you didn't need Belisarius Prime he's great for swarming he has a niche role and he's great there but you didn't actually need him right and so it could be the case that this new archer commander could also serve sort of a niche purpose it could serve a niche role right William Wallace's niche was smite damage right we saw him have smite damage which is quite niche there's not that many commanders in the game with that we saw the niche for Belisarius Prime be that he's great for swarming things what could the niche be for the archer commander well we haven't seen a single target open field archer commander since Boudicca Prime a lot of people have benched Boudicca Prime at this point if they're running a single army and even if they're running two armies a lot of people are running Juge Leong with Herman and then Asher Bonapal with YSG or something like that right or or Juge Leong with Asher Bonapal and Herman YSG something like that a lot of people aren't running the Boudicca Prime right now because there's just so much good AOE to be had from archers so it could be the case and you know I mean if we see this Archer open field commander be a Boudicca Prime I think it's going to be a niche role I think it's going to be really hard to bench any of the AoE commanders that Archers have right now and so you know this I I don't have high expectations personally for this upcoming Archer commander I think Archers are in a really good place right now they have a lot of AoE a lot of damage on the board yes they are targeted more than anything else and so this is probably most likely in my opinion probably going to be more of a niche role perhaps more debuff oriented or maybe it's going to focus on combo attacks like we've talked about in previous videos they're just they just announced that new formation combo attacks could be an archer thing right it could primarily be for them it could be the case that this archer is a bit more tanky compared to some of the other archers we've seen because they're so heavily targeted right so these are things that I'm thinking about for the upcoming archer I don't suspect it's going to be some insane AoE commander but I could be wrong it could be and 
if that's the case then you might bench one of your current archer commanders and so right now all of this to say if you're working on an archer march or archers are your next project to focus on you might want to hold off right now because we are on the cusp of expecting new archers and i want to be very clear here it's not guaranteed archers come next but like we've again we've seen this trend for four years it's most likely going to be archers so it would be very risky right now to invest in archer commanders even though i don't expect this commander to be super good it's better to be safe than sorry so right now i would say hold off on archer investments see what this commander is and then proceed from there now after archers i'm expecting cavalry right and here's the thing right like you know some people might expect leadership and engineering and that's totally possible and this is one of the things that's going to be hard for me to predict i don't know what comes after archers it's either cavalry or it's leadership and engineering that's my best guess with Lilith announcing that they're considering adding some sort of firearms or some sort of new era in the game we don't know when that could be coming if it's coming at all I think a lot of players have been quite negative towards that uh, announcement and so maybe they're going to rethink that but it's going to be hard for me to predict what comes after that and the reason though that I'm saying cavalry comes next is two things first of all if we look back on history we haven't seen three releases in between leadership in a while right the last time that we saw three releases between leadership was from Trajan to Honda right that was like the three a three release after that Honda to Heraclius was five releases in between leadership and then from Heraclius to Lapu Lapu that was four releases in between right and so you know it it's possible that we could see just you know three releases come out and then and we get leadership but I'm expecting four okay that's how I feel it might I could be wrong I I'm expecting Cavalry the other reason I'm expecting Cavalry is because I feel like Cavalry right now especially after whatever these archers are is probably going to be in the worst place in terms of open field combat right Cavalry are still in a great spot but I did notice in my last KBK full disclosure that my Nevsky Joan because it was out of place all the time it was getting crushed a little bit right and so if it's left alone it pumps out insane damage nice debuff with with Nevsky same thing William is a great secondary to either Nevsky or Huo, whoever you pair him with. So Cavalry are still in a good spot, but I think they are probably in the worst spot of the three troop types, at least slightly. And I think also part of that is because the open field meta right now feels very infantry dominant. I feel like Liu Che is popping off. CPO Prime is still very strong. We have William Wallace. We have Alexander the Great. We even have Gorgo, right? Like a lot of these infantry commanders are popping off and infantry counters Cavalry. Okay. And so I feel like Cavalry need a new new sort of like must have commander okay we're still running Nevsky Joan if we look back Nevsky came out in January of 2022 all right and if we look at what we're expecting for this next release here if we just pull up an estimate as to when this this release would be this I'm guessing would be if it's 70 days after uh, October 8th it'll be sometime in December okay either at the very beginning of December or at the very end of December somewhere along those lines I expect these new cavalry to drop or again it could be leadership and engineering that that's the next thing that it could be but the reason that I feel like it's cavalry is because you know by the time we get to December we're almost three years since Nevsky came out he came out at the beginning of 2022 and this is almost the beginning of 2025 right so I think it's time that Nevsky just he's got to take a seat on the bench and you know what's even funnier is that Nevsky's not even the oldest cavalry commander on the field right now people are still running William myself included which came out August of 2020 okay right now I'm recording this on August 16th that's over four years ago we're still using William okay and I'm not saying William is bad he's actually great in the open field but like he's almost about to get a relic right like we just got the Guan Yu relic which means Artemisia and Ramses are next and then Theodora YSS Chandra Gupta and William right like like William is in the generation after Guan Yu okay he's a gen 4 commander and so you know when I think about Cavalry being in the open field place that they're in right now I feel like they need a new must-have game breaking AoE like crazy good open field commander I'm ready for it I think all the Cavmans are ready for it it's been so long since we got you know Huo was great I think he's performed really well but he wasn't as exciting as Joan of Arc Prime I think right so we need another Joan of Arc Prime we need another Nevsky Prime right we need Nevsky 2 and I think that's why for that reason Lilith will push up the release of Cavalry instead of doing leadership and engineering also because again we haven't seen a three release cycle between leadership uh commander releases 
in many years so that's why i think it'll be four and that is my expectation and for that reason i feel like cavalry is like the second worst thing to be focusing on right now because again we're like four months away from new cavalry potentially that's my guess okay if we're four months away from new cavalry it would be very risky right now to invest in commanders like william that is william the cavalry commander not william wallace and also you know even nevsky maybe right nevsky could be on the chopping block who knows yes he does have a nice debuff and great stats but who owes active skill just deals more damage he has a bigger skill damage bonus for himself at the start of a battle right so who knows but if this next cav commander pairs super well with Uo or with Joan of Arc, then maybe Nevsky is on the chopping block. Okay. So just be very careful investing in cavalry right now. Now, of course, after that, I do expect leadership and engineering if they keep their same cycle. Okay. That's what I would expect here. And this thick black line marks two things. First of all, that marks 2025. Okay. And it also marks when the developers said that they were going to be releasing a new civilization. Okay. In the recent LA player meetup, they said that they would be releasing a new civilization at the beginning of 2025. So I'm excited expecting sometime in January. It could be February or March, but expect a new gold key commander right between these two releases. Okay. That's my expectation. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, well, we know like it's going to be Mayan or Aztec or something like that for the next civilization. That's kind of what they've hinted at not set in stone, not guaranteed, but that's what it seems to be. And if we scroll back up to the gold key commanders, there's only one cavalry gold key commander. Now, of course, Minamoto is, you know, a commander in KVK one or pre KVK where you can get a second cavalry legendary but if you look at infantry they have two commanders in the gold keys if you look at archers they have two commanders in the gold keys if you look at leadership well leadership has like one two three four commanders in the gold keys right barca being a uh you know a vip commander and so you know i feel like cavalry need another gold key commander that's on the same level as Pyrus and Thutmose, right? That's my expectation. Who knows? It's really hard to tell what they're going to do with the gold key commanders. We could just get another leadership commander. That's kind of universal, right? Like if we got another Mehmed, I feel like people would be really happy about that in the gold keys. Now it would dilute the gold keys a little bit more. So that would suck. But like, you know, I think if it's a great commander, great, put them in there and people will get their hands on them and new players will be happy with something awesome. Okay. So just to reiterate going into 2025, I think we're going to get maybe a new gold key cavalry or a new gold key leadership commander that's up in the air i have no idea what they're going to do are the mayans known for cavalry right like i i have no idea but anyway beyond that we'll probably see leadership and engineering okay and if we look at when this is going to be coming down the pipeline i'm expecting it to be sometime near the end of february maybe it's mid February or maybe it's you know early March but I expect that to be the next time that we get engineering ranged right and I think you know part of this is because um first of all I feel like leadership and engineering are actually in a decent spot right now I feel like a lot of players are starting to dip their toe into the ranged meta and getting really good results here and I feel like range don't need a new broken commander at the time of recording this right I feel like cavalry are in a, in a better spot to need that which is why I think cavalry will come first also lots of meta garrisons right now are still running Heraclius I feel like Heraclius is still great and so i feel like we don't really need something new there immediately right lapu lapu was kind of a miss he seemed to be a little bit more city garrison focused rather than heraclius of course heraclius does still prefer city garrisons but it performs well at least in mixed garrisons or even in regular garrisons right so that's my expectation and yes i do think that this new leadership commander will be a garrison commander because as we've seen in the past i could be wrong there right we could see like i said maybe another med right another sort of like mixed rally type of commander or maybe we'll see a, a new trajan right like a, a trajan 2.0 where it's going to be a versatility open field leadership commander. we haven't seen that since like what was honda the last one yeah honda was the last one and that was at the end of 2021 so we're definitely overdue for that if they do want to go down that path but this is where we start to get into you know foggy gray areas right because now we're predicting many months down the line and we're assuming that cavalry comes before this which might not be the case and we also are assuming like that they're not going to implement like gunpowder or something like that in this range like we have no idea what they could be doing for the beginning of 2025 big things could be coming that could be shaking this up and then finally uh the last thing and i guess i'll just remove this the last thing that i want to mention here is infantry and i expect the next infantry if we follow this release window to be sometime at the beginning of May 
of 2025 okay so that means right now infantry is in the safest spot if you invest in William Wallace you're probably going to be able to use him until May of 2025 at the earliest right he could survive even longer than that and I do expect most likely these will probably be smite damage okay it seems like that's the sort of direction that we're headed for infantry commanders it's also worth noting that the new combo attack type of formation that we saw probably not going to be for ranged because range requires setting up the arrow tower which means it has to be in v formation which is kind of like one of the big downsides of ranged is like you're forced to use that formation so like combo attacks i mean i guess they could come to range but they wouldn't be able to use the combo attack formation unless lilith changes their mind on how arrow towers work but anyway all that to say if you're making an infantry investment right now meaning you're investing in liu che you're probably good for i mean at least nine months right at least nine months if not longer and i would be shocked if liu che gets put on the bench from whatever this is because liu che in my opinion is probably the best commander of the game right now he is rivaled by uh Yue Liang, i think but like i just don't e i don't imagine this set of commanders replacing liu che i just can't imagine it i could be wrong these commanders could have insane synergy with the smite talent tree and william wallace and then like somehow we just all go towards william wallace and this new commander i don't see that being the case at the time of recording this my opinion on that could change over the next few months but i think right now liu che very safe investment cpo prime a little bit less safe right because it seems like we are going towards skill damage and also less safe by extension to that would be guan yu the big question here is alexander the great do you invest in alexander the great knowing that he's probably going to be good for the next nine months it depends on how many sculptures you have i think you know he's so reliant on liu che that you know whoever this next release is if this is also smite and it's like if it's another liu che then like gg alex is done right so a little bit riskier to invest in alex i'll probably make a an updated free to play you know infantry guide over the next couple of days or week or so so just stay tuned for that but this is kind of my uh my plan or my expectation going into 2025 or the next nine to 12 months i think this is what we're going to see from a release perspective okay i expect archers next then either cavalry or ranged it could be flipped and then after that i after those two i'll expect infantry and somewhere in the middle there at the start of the year we'll get probably a new gold key commander or a new event commander something like that and uh who knows what that'll be but i'm thinking it's either going to be cavalry or leadership or maybe just maybe they'll put a ranged commander in the gold keys that's totally possible as well but guys hopefully this helps you think about the future of your account what's coming down the pipeline most likely and i want you guys to remember that none of this is set in stone this is my predictions for the next nine months of the game but it, i could be completely wrong here right like it might not be the case so take this with a grain of salt but this is how i'm feeling about this stuff i don't expect the next archers to be game breaking we'll have to wait and see but i do expect if we get cavalry after that i expect the calves to pop off at least that's what i'm hoping so you know i'm saving my sculptures for this maybe the archers i have a ton of sculptures and yeah guys uh, what you should take away from this is that you should be saving your sculptures for many months okay save up a bunch of sculptures save up like a thousand twelve hundred thirteen hundred sculptures okay and then dump them all into the safest investment the safest meta choice that's what i think right now i think the safest thing to invest in is probably liu che i don't see him going anywhere archer's a little bit less safe because something might change over the next you know two months cavalry i think an investment in huo or joan of arc prime probably a bit safer than the other two but who knows at this point Nevsky lives forever and then of course if you're looking at like Bobber or Margaret I think those are probably the first on the chopping block for engineering not to say that like Margaret isn't great for example but like I mean she's just they're just the oldest ones right they came out in uh the beginning of 2023 so by the time we get here we're gonna be two years away from them and so like you're probably not gonna bench Gonzalo right Gaja Mata is solid as well so yeah uh, an investment in margaret or bobber probably a little bit iffy right now and that's that guys if you found this video useful please drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the youtube algorithm and then comment down below what you think about this style of video does this help you think about how you should be investing in your account hopefully it did that was the whole point of this video that way you guys you know a lot of people are commenting like oh my God, should i invest in alex right now should i invest in guan yu right now should i invest in huo right now like this is probably going to help you if you could predict what's coming next when it's coming maybe this will help you uh, answer those questions so comment down below if you know you found this useful of course subscribe while you're down there and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace belisarius prime is coming